Hi, I'm Eliza Lewis. And I'm Shailen Henderson. And today we are doing our presentation on the effects of exercise on cognitive performance. This is just a brief overview of what we'll be going over today. We're just gonna start off with a review of literature and then jump straight into how we conducted our research and discuss our findings a little bit more with uh, some acknowledgements at the end. So for an introduction, we felt that it would be valuable to have a better understanding of the elements first. And so cognitive performance can actually be categorized across attentional allocation, inhibitory control, and cognitive flexibility. Two main measures that are used to measure cognitive performance is the Flanker test and the Stroop test. And so better performance um, in the incongruent Stroop test equates to better inhibitory control, which is a measure of better cognitive performance. And then in relating cognitive performance and acute exercise, this is a growing field of research which spans across a range of demographics. However, we do not see a lot of inclusion of female athletes, and that is where our research comes into play. Previous literature surrounding cognitive functioning and physical exercise found that participating in acute physical exercise enhances short-term memory, attention control, and executive functioning. And it was found that both high intensity interval ex exercise and moderate intensity continuous exercise both impacted cognitive flexibility. Some other previous literature showed a small positive effect in cognitive performance after acute exercise, with optimal effects after moderate exercise and performance actually worsening after high fitness level groups or high interval exercise. Relating it back to athletes, there are many inconsistencies in findings which point towards a lack of inclusion of female athletes. And a particular point of interest was the relationship and combination of expert performance approach and cognitive component skills approach, which looks at performance across different sports based on their skills and their activity they're engaged in. We hypothesized that engaging in acute exercise would improve cognitive functioning, especially in relation to inhibitory control. And then in relation to athletes and performance across different teams, we believe that a mixed factorial analysis would indicate a significant difference between different sport groups in terms of cognitive performance in the post-exercise testing. And then to jump straight into our methods. Our sample consisted of Meredith College undergraduate students who were either part of the softball team or the field hockey team. Participants were recruited using convenient sampling. 17 participants took um, the incongruent Stroop test. One participant had to leave, so wasn't able to take the post-test. So we had 16 participants take the pre-test, participate in exercise, and take the post-test. Data was cleaned and then entered into SPSF. In terms of our procedure, we actually had two researchers go. I went to the field hockey team and we had Callie who went to the softball team and we gave them all of the information, including an informed consent, as well as a QR code, which linked to the incongruent Stroop test. And we indicated that there would be a debrief afterwards. In terms of the Stroop test, there's actually two, the congruent and the incongruent Stroop test on this link. However, we only made them perform the incongruent Stroop test, which you can actually see below. So the word red is written in blue and they are required to say blue instead. So you're reading or saying out loud what you can see as opposed to the words that you're actually reading. From there on, each team went on to their individual moderate exercise. And after their practice, they, they performed the same test again and in both cases, their times were taken and we wanted to see if there was a difference in time to take the test both before exercise and after exercise. Our first step of data analysis was to clean the data and then manually input it into SPSS. Because we were conducting a mixed factorial analysis, we wanted to organize the team. So even though they were anonymous, field hockey was labeled as one and softball was labeled as two and then their times were inputted. We conducted the paired samples t-test in order to evaluate the effects of physical activity on cognitive performance which tested our first hypothesis. And then for our second hypothesis uh, we ran a mixed factorial analysis which was used to compare if there was significant difference in performance across the field hockey and softball teams 
in terms of their post-exercise times. So for the paired samples t-test, the mean time of the pre-test was about 37 seconds compared to the post-test, which was about 33 seconds. From this, we can conclude that participants took less time to accurately complete the Stroop test after participating in acute exercise, which demonstrates improved cognitive functioning. If you look at the um, bar chart to the side, you can see that two athletes actually there were only two athletes that performed worse after the post exercise in the post exercise times, um, but overall we saw improvement. We also ran a mixed factorial analysis. However, um, there was not a significant difference across the teams, as you can see from the table. Um, but there is explanation behind that, and we can jump into that a little more. But it was really close to being significant. Okay, to discuss our findings a little bit more. In terms of cognitive performance, our results agreed with those of previous studies that found that cognition improved after participating in exercise. And then in terms of athlete cognition, which was the mixed factorial analysis, um, the reason why we believe that there was a lack of significance in the results is the difference in participants across the two teams. So in field hockey, there were six, and in softball, there were 10. And if those numbers were closer together, it would be more likely that the results would actually be significant in favor of the softball team. And then although the results, if the results were significant, um, athlete cognition as an explanation for the potential difference across the teams may be a plausible explanation, but it can also not be considered causal um, as there is still a lot of research that has to be done on athlete cognition. So for some limitations, we had a small sample size. If we were able to do this study again with a larger sample size, we would have greater external validity and generalizability. In terms of self-selection bias, there could have potentially been a difference in characteristics between people who chose to participate in our study versus those who chose to opt out of it. And since we had two different researchers collecting data, there could have been an influence on instrumentation. And then since we gave the same version of the Stroop test for both the pre-test and the post-test, there could have been some familiarity that influenced response time. And so a lot of um, our findings and our limitations informed our next steps. And so although we had significant results, we would like to include more participants um, in future measurements just to ensure and build on that significance and also span it across a greater variety of teams. So looking at more than just two teams to really look at the mixed factorial analysis more in depth um, and compare cognitive um, athlete cognition. And then our last next step that we would consider is implementing a control. So something um, such as all athletes competing or performing the same exercise um, or the same type of exercise is just one example or method of doing that. But we feel that that would be an interesting next step. To end off, we also just wanted to give some acknowledgements. We wanted to thank the field hockey team as well as the softball team who gave us some of their time and from their practice to help us conduct this research. We also want to thank Ali who helped us conduct the experiment with the softball team and Dr. Odekirk who played an instrumental role in helping us set up and understand the mixed factorial analysis. And of course, to Dr. Raid um, for her guidance and support in helping us prepare this presentation. And then this is just a look at some of the references that we used. Thank you for your time. And we hope you can understand a little bit more of the relationship between cognitive performance and acute exercise.